Okay, kiddos, today we're going to look at the spectral lines created by um, excited hydrogen, um, helium, mercury, and uh, neon. And we're going to look at them through diffraction gradients. I'm going to try to place this over the lens of the camera. This one happens to be the atomic spectrum, or excuse me, the visible spectrum for hydrogen gas. You can see we have some nice sharp lines there. And as I do this, I'll rotate this for you so you guys can get a good view. Remember what those lines are. They represent electrons dropping from a higher energy to a lower energy. And when they do so, they give off a certain frequency or wavelength of light, which has a certain energy. And we can calculate the value of the energy levels in the hydrogen atom. Of course, Niels Bohr uh, decided to use hydrogen first because it only had one electron to worry about. And he figured if he could find out what happened with one electron moving around the nucleus of an atom, he could extrapolate that to atoms with many electrons. So that's hydrogen gas. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch this off quickly. And we're going to go um, to, I believe, we have uh, helium next. So let me switch that out for us. Okay. So I'll turn that on. There's helium. And we'll do the same thing with our diffraction gradient. We'll place it over the lens of the camera, see if we can get a nice visible spectrum there. That looks pretty nice, doesn't it? So you can see we have a different set of lines for helium. Might be interesting to note that helium was first discovered not here on Earth, but on the Sun. And you guys can think about perhaps how that was done, maybe using a similar thought process as we're using today. Notice the spectral lines are different, signifying we have different uh, values for the energy levels as the electrons are moving around the helium nucleus as opposed to hydrogen. So once again, that is helium. Okay, let's switch that out and we'll go to mercury vapor next. And we'll turn mercury vapor on. And we'll put our diffraction gradient over the lens. And boy, we certainly get a different spectrum there with mercury vapor, don't we? So we have a lot of purples. We have that nice sharp green spectrum there, or that green color there that's visible. And all I'm doing is I'm rotating the fraction gradient so you guys can get a good view of what's happening here. Okay, that's mercury vapor. Let's do one more. We'll go ahead and do neon next. Of course, that's everybody's favorite. So we'll put that in our gizmo, and we'll turn the neon on. And we'll go ahead and put our diffraction gradient over that, and we'll see, once again, a different series of lines. Oops, let's put that right over so we can see that a bit better. So we see a lot on the red and orange side of the spectrum, as opposed to way over on the purple and green like we did earlier. And that would be expected with the color of the neon lamp. Okay, so that was neon. So in order, we did hydrogen, then we did helium, then mercury vapor, and we wrapped up with neon. Okay, thanks for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.